For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. Nearly a fortnight ago, India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval had an occasion to meet President Vladimir Putin of Russia, a rare occurrence in these strategic circles. Since then, focus has shifted to the role of the National Security Council Secretariat and NSA Ajit Doval and their scope and role in India's national security architecture. How has it expanded? How the NSCS is now working as a link between different ministries and the Prime Minister's office? And what role does it play in securing this country from various traditional and non-security threats is the topic of this week's Simply Nitin. I'm Nitin Gokhale. So when India's NSA or the National Security Advisor Ajit Doval went to Moscow for a meeting of National Security Advisors of the Central Asian Republics and Russia to focus on issues of Afghanistan, he also got an audience with President Vladimir Putin of Russia, which in strategic circles is seen as a rare and a privileged occasion because normally Putin does not meet anybody below the heads of state position. In 20 years, he's not met anyone other than heads of state. And therefore, there have been a lot of discussion on why and uh, how Putin decided to meet Ajit Doval, India's NSA. There is a speculation that uh, Mr. Doval was trying to convey a message from India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Putin about the situation in Ukraine and perhaps even uh, brief him on what the West led by uh, the US thinks. Because just a week before he met Putin, Mr. Doval had uh, gone and met uh, top officials, including the uh, US NSA, in Washington, D.C., in a different context. That time, he was talking about the initiative on critical and emerging technologies between India and U.S. and how to take forward various projects under that initiative. So, we don't know exactly what happened in that one-hour-long, one-on-one meeting where only Mr. Putin and Mr. Doval, and apart from, I'm, so I'm sure, the uh, interpreters, uh, nobody else was there. So, it has also done one more thing, and that is refocus attention on the organization or the structure that uh, NSA Ajit Doval leads, which is called the National Security Council Secretariat. What is this organization? Why is it important and how it is gained in importance? So, the NSCS is not a new organization. It was established at the beginning of uh, this century under the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government. But it has gained in traction, it has gained in importance uh, since 2015 when it was decided by the Modi government to expand the scope and role of the NSCS. And reorganization of the national security structure was ordered. In the past couple of years, you have heard me doing at least two programs on uh, the uh, expanded scope of the National Security Council Secretariat. We have done uh, the organogram, as it is called, and how uh, there has been a proper government rules of business allocation, allocation of business rules, as it is called, has been uh, given or the NSCS has been brought under the allocation of business rules, which is supposed to give any organization the teeth it requires. Uh, it was done in 2018. And since then, the uh, institutionalization of NSCS has uh, picked up pace. What does it uh, entail? There were four key features of the reorganization. And they are restructuring of the NSCS, institutionalizing roles and functions of the NSCS by inclusion in allocation of business rules, as I mentioned, ensuring greater awareness within the government about the new role and function of the NSCS, and identifying areas of focus for creation of appropriate human resource potential. 
Accordingly, the NSCS now has four wings or four verticals. I have said this before, but it's worth reiterating. There is a strategic affairs wing, there is an internal affairs wing, there is a technology and intelligence wing, and there is a military vertical. The strategic affairs, internal affairs, and the technology and intelligence wings are headed by a deputy NSA each. And in this case, in the current case, the strategic affairs wing is headed by Vikram Misri, a career foreign service officer uh, and a serving foreign service officer. The internal affairs wing is uh, currently headed by the recently retired Director General of Border Security Force, Pankaj Singh, a former IPS officer. And the uh, technology and intelligence wing is headed by the senior most of the deputy NSAs, uh, Rajinder Khanna, who was the former head of the research and analysis wing, India's external intelligence agency. Currently, the military advisor's post is vacant after the uh, then Lieutenant General Anil Chauhan went on to become the second chief of defense staff heading the three services and heading the uh, vertical under the Department of Military Affairs under the Ministry of Defense. He's been promoted to the rank of general and now he heads the DMA as Secretary DMA and also is the Permanent Chairman Chiefs of Staff Committee under the Ministry of Defense. So that vacancy is yet to be filled. The individual tasks which uh, these verticals under the NSC has handled are uh, on, the, on the organogram. Uh, they are the key tasks, they are the key responsibilities of uh, the uh, individual verticals. The uh, technology and intelligence wing also is mandated to take a comprehensive approach towards technical intelligence. And under him, the National Cyber Security Coordinator also works. The military wing, of course, pays attention to the neighborhood, monitors implementation of a national defense strategy, works closely with the defense industry, and suggests ways to ensure adoption of military technology, modern military te technology, uh, under the rubric of Make in India, especially. The uh, NSCS was restructured also to bring in the NSA as the principal national security advisor uh, to the Prime Minister and the National Security Council. It also works as a secretariat for the National Security Council, as I mentioned, the Strategic Policy Group, the National Security Advisory Board, and the specialized structures like the National Information Board and the Technology Coordination Group. The SPG or the Strategic Policy Group functions under the NSA now, unlike the earlier times when the Cabinet Secretary used to head it. And the SPG is now the principal mechanism for interministerial coordination and integration of inputs to formulate national security policies. So one change that has occurred is that the NSCS now gives important inputs and uh, advice on structures and plans and projects that are done by various ministries, especially those uh, involved in national security matters, both traditional as well as non-traditional security. And included in the new structure of the SPG are new stakeholders, including the Vice Chairman of the Niti Aayog, the Governor of the Reserve Bank of India, Chiefs of, of course, all the three defense services, Secretaries of all important security-related ministries, which includes the Home Ministry, the Defense Ministry, uh, the Secretary uh, RLAW as Chief of the Intelligence Wing, the Director IB, uh, and of course, uh, a Defense Planning Committee, which was created in 2018 under the chairmanship of the NSA is mandated to integrate relevant inputs in the formulation of the holistic national security policies. The NSCS, uh, in coordination with the headquarter IDS, works as the secretariat for the DPC, which is the Defense Planning Committee. In line with its expanded role, the NSCS is mandated to conduct interministerial coordination. That's what I mentioned about security-related issues and works closely with Niti Aayog to ensure synergy between security and development strategies at the national level. That is the huge difference between what NSCS used to do earlier and what it is doing now. So, 
what has happened in the meantime you have the expanded role the allocation of business rules being now applied in the nscs has meant that uh, wherever required the nscs now can take a call and as a result the maritime and indo pacific division under the nscs have embarked on a study to identify ways to enhance apex level coordination among diverse agencies dealing with maritime security finally leading to the creation of the post of the maritime security coordinator this is of course based on a report of the group of ministers which came out in 2001 after studying everything and after a meeting of the spg in 2021 chaired by the nsa the prime minister reviewed the findings of the nscs study and recommendations of the strategic policy group on india's maritime security at several meetings based on these meetings and interactions with stakeholders at both center and the states and different ministries involved in the maritime domain fisheries ministry environment ministry for example a separate charter of duties of a national maritime security division in the nscs was cleared and the creation of a post of a national maritime security coordinator was approved by the cabinet committee on security the person heading that national maritime security coordination group or the person who is now the national maritime security coordinator is the former vice chief of the indian navy g ashok kumar who has to coordinate with multi agency uh, stakeholders which ranges from as i mentioned the fisheries ministry environment ministry state governments marine police you name it and uh, he has to uh, then look at what can be done to strengthen india's maritime security uh, both along the coast and in its eez to impart civil military fusion sharing of best practices and improve maritime security consciousness uh, as some of the priority areas under this mechanism this of course means there are several new things uh, that the nscs is doing uh, coordination studies and uh, there is one more thing that the uh, nscs does there are couple of security dialogues at the nsa level and at the deputy secretary deputy nsa level one of them is the colombo security conclave which was launched in 2020 by expanding the earlier trilateral maritime security arrangement between india sri lanka and maldives now you have seychelles in bangladesh who have participated in the colombo security conclave will soon become the uh, members of the colombo security conclave then there is of course the wide ranging cooperation envisaged under the bimstec national securities forum and the nsa also holds nsa level dialogues with different countries major powers as well as middle powers Uh, which includes us russia uk france germany saudi arabia nigeria indonesia japan iran and central asian republics the delhi dialogue on afghanistan was hosted in new delhi uh, in november 2021 and the india central asia's nsa's meeting was held in december 2022 this was the follow up for which mr dowal went to moscow uh, earlier this month so clearly the hands of the nscs and the nsa are full they are mandated to look at the entire comprehensive national power and national security interests of india so that all ministries related to national security are on the same page they work in tandem and give the right advice to the prime minister and the cabinet committee on security which of course as most of you know comprises Uh, of uh, the prime minister the three uh, ministers the ministers of uh, defense minister of home home affairs uh, the minister of finance and ministry of external affairs which means you have uh, the prime minister the uh, defense minister rajnath singh the finance minister uh, nirmala sitaraman external affairs minister s jayashankar and home minister amit shah are members of the ccs which takes the final decision or clears every uh, proposal concerning national security that is the apex body the highest body that clears any national security uh, project or national security related project when it comes to giving approvals on the at the cabinet level that's the new structure 
as it is uh, going ahead it is evolving if you look at my previous video there are several changes in in terms of personnel in terms of uh, the people who have come in the in terms of expansion of the nscs which is headed by uh, the nsa and uh, mr doval uh, who as i said has come under uh, a new renewed focus uh, in the global strategic circles uh, of course this is now india's longest serving national security advisor and will continue to hold the chair at least until 2024 when elections come up uh, for uh, india's next government starting uh, perhaps uh, june 2024 that's why i wanted to update all of you on where the structure is and what the mandate is there are several other issues which the nscs handles but uh, for lack of time i am not going to focus on them or mention them here but maybe there will be a second part or maybe we'll have one more occasion to do this over the next 6 month period time being i'm going to stop here and uh, of course ask you to um, study this uh, ask me uh, questions send us feedback you know our social media handles where to uh, reach us where to subscribe to our youtube channel and of course keep sending suggestions so that i can take up matters that interest you uh, apart from matters that interest us the strat news global for the time being it's goodbye